Watching Harmony in Diversity. And today we're speaking with Murray Davies, who's a Baha'i, and he's the chairperson of the Faith Communities Council of Victoria. Thanks for coming in, Murray. Thank you very much for inviting me, Norm. It's been a pleasure. Baha'i. Yes. What does it what does the Baha'i religion? Well, just describe basically what that of course, religion thank is. Thank you. Well, Baha'i first means followers of the glory. Mm -hmm. And that glory is the glory of God, who is our prophet founder. And his title is Baha'u'llah, which means the glory of God, which was not his name, but it's a title, of course. Now, that title was given to him by the, the previous messenger of God, the Bab, and his ministry was from 1844 to 1850. Um, and his primary ministry, he said, was to prepare the, the way for the manifestation of God for our time. So Baha'is believe in progressive revelation. So that means we believe each faith builds on the previous one and each, as God sends a messenger each time as the world is in need of one. And we believe that the world was very much in need of one in the 19th century. Mm. Mm. And still is. And still is, of course, that's right. And <laughs> that's we, believe, right. <laughs> we believe there'll be more messengers yeah, of God in the future, right. definitely. We, yes, yes, indeed. Mm. Well, thank you very much for that, yes. Murray. We'll go mm. back to the yes, Baha'i sure. faith a bit later. Mm. But can you mind if we just trace your okay, your faith sure. story? You right. you were born as what? Uh, I was born as a Christian. I was born as a Baptist. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Baptist family. Mm -hmm. um, I'm descended from Huguenots and Methodists and Presbyterians, but um, my family's three generations Baptist. Mm -hmm. um, I did some training for the ministry. I went through school and I went through university and I did some seminary training, um, and I was active in a Baptist church. Um, I also was over, went overseas for quite a while, and that's where I was exposed to other faiths. Um, and I thought Christianity is rather inclusive and uh, exclusive, and religion should be more inclusive, um, mm -hmm. should embrace all humanity. Um, and that's a concept that the faith that I've joined believes, that the world mm -hmm. is one, mankind is one, and religions are one, and there's one God. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a progression over time, and it was about the age of 32, um, that I'd first come into contact with a Baha'i faith when I was 17, um, probably lost contact with it, then had about another five years contact with it before I actually decided to become one myself as well. Mm -hmm. That's an, an interesting story. Mm. Mm. Perhaps to go back yes. onto it a little bit. Sure. Uh, so with your schooling, mm. uh, was that just an ordinary school or was it a religious school? No, 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 it was a, mm. a general school. Just a general That's school. That's right, yes. And you say that you did a bit of seminary work. Uh, how, what did that look like? How did you come involved in that? Oh, well, well I called it seminary, but uh, I attended a couple of years of Bible college. Okay, That's yes, right. yes, yes, yes. And your purpose in doing that? I was preparing myself for Christian ministry. That's what I intended to do. Mm -hmm. So that was my, my plan. Mm -hmm. And you, at, at that point, you, you felt quite comfortable with, obviously, with, with, yes, with Christianity in that with form. the faith at that time, that's right, yes. So you were overseas, what, what took you overseas? I went overseas for year 11 as a Rotary Exchange student, mm -hmm. and I went to Malaysia, and mm -hmm. I stayed with multiple families. Um, I experienced Hinduism, I experienced Buddhism, I experienced Islam, um, I experienced other flavours of Christianity, um, and that's probably where my mind was opened a little. Okay. Um, and it probably took a long, still on, a long time after that before uh, I was open to, mm. uh, open to receiving another faith, yes. Yeah. Mm. So you were around about 17, 18 at that time, I think, was that? Well, 16, 17. 16, 17, yes, that's right. yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, that, that would have imprinted on you fairly <laughs> strongly, I would imagine, yes. That the yes, and then I probably came back and I moved away from that, but it, over, over time I became open to it again. Mm -hmm. um, and that was probably due to my business where we don't need to go to there. But again, I was, I was opened up to multiculturalism and, yes. and different nationalities. 
and then appreciating those nationalities, appreciating other faiths, mm -hmm. which is a multi-faiths is, is an extension of multiculturalism. We very much believe in Victoria and, um, mm. and it was progression, yes. It probably took me a few more years afterwards, so probably about another 15 years. Yes. Yes, Victoria is certainly the right place for multi-faith and multiculturalism. <laughs> right. there's, there's a lot of that activity going on. Mm. So without wanting to expose too much of, yeah, the, of sure. your process, <laughs> but what were the conflicts that you started to feel? With it? Like the, the, the Christian perspective yes, uh, yes, of course. was here mm. and all the beauty of Jesus, etc. Right. Mm. Uh, what were the, what were the, the conflicts yeah, which course. said, well... Okay, mm. definitely, all right. Mm. The conflict was obviously are all other religions wrong and only Christianity is right, which yes. was obviously the background that I came from, mm -hmm. um, and especially from being from a conservative Christian background, mm -hmm. that, that there's only one way to God through Christ. Yes. Um, as I became more open-minded and we went back into the background of that, um, that yes, Christ was the messenger of God for that time. There are messengers of God before him, Moses, Noah, Adam, and we believe there'll be messengers of God after him mm. um, and more to come in the future. Um, and so many messengers of God that have been lost to history that we don't know. Yes. So was Jesus only the messenger of God and there's no other way to God mm -hmm. and everybody else is wrong? Mm. And it says, ex I explored that concept. Yes. And finally, someone put the question to me, what was stopping me from being a Baha'i? And as I explored that concept, Mm. And then I said, I could accept, well, I can accept other religions as being equal to my own religion. And I can embrace other religions as, as having a rightful place in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that was, that was quite a path. It took me a long time. So Indeed. a lot of people hear about a faith mm. and can join it very quickly. Mm. For me, it was, took quite mm. some time. Mm. Mm. But... Why Baha'i in the sense that mm. acceptance of other religions, you could have been a Buddhist, well, I could have been a Hindu, right, yes. uh, but you became a Baha'i. Why is that? Um, by acknowledging that as the latest religion in the world for this, for this time, okay. and by acknowledging the Bab and Beholder as the messengers of God for this mm. time, and that we expect there'll be a future messenger that we have to recognise in the future as well. You just mentioned mm. time. Yes. We've run out of it. Okay, thank you. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity. And today we're speaking to Murray Davies. He's a Baha'i and a chairperson of the Faith Communities Council of Victoria. Thank you. Murray. Before the break, we started to get into why you chose to be a Baha'i. Now, the question which, was, which arose was, you could also have become a Buddhist and you could also have become a Hindu and still had the capacity to embrace other religions as having validity. Of why Baha'i? Very good question, Norm. And, and I think probably because um, one was the group of circle, the circle that I was meeting in, but more specifically is if you accept the concept of progressive revelation, mm -hmm. which is part of previous faiths, Christianity has that concept, Judaism has that concept, um, that there's a first mention of a principle and it's built on, in, on other, other times in the writings of the holy writings. Um, but basically Baha'is believe that God has sent a messenger at various times, such as Adam and Noah and Methuselah and Abraham and Moses and Krishna and Buddha and Jesus and Muhammad and the Bab and Baha'u'llah, mm -hmm. in that order historically. So the, the messenger of God for this time is Baha'u'llah. Mm -hmm. And Baha'is follow his message and his teaching and try to live according to, to his principles. Baha'is believe there'll be another messenger of God, and he said, not for a thousand years, so we look at a time, Baha'u'llah's time frame is a thousand years. He says his message will influence time after that, the same as all previous prophets have, but we're expecting another messenger of God sometime in the next 850 years. Right. Mm. So on the basis of that, mm. uh, 
you might expect bar highs up towards that end of that thousand years. When, <laughs> when the next Should be looking, to the, be looking for the new messenger of God. That, yes. But they would move with that messenger. That's right, yes, yes. Mm. Yes, that's, that's right. That's interesting mm. uh, because it, it raises, as you did say, with, with, with both Christianity and with Islam for that matter, mm. uh, they will accept the progressive yes. prophets, but that's, they chop it off. They chop off, at, that's at right. At one point. Oh, yes. Exactly. So mm. being able to move like that and to, to, to respond to the latest of the messengers, mm. what advantage do you think that gives you? It, you then, well, firstly, you're not stuck in a creed and a philosophy. And, and um, Baha'is believe that, firstly, Baha'u'llah said, I, I, I came and I suffered imprisonment for 40 years to bring about world unity. Mm. So that's one of the first things Baha'is are working for, world unity, for compul universal education, for um, gender equality, for, for economic, not a socialistic, economic distribution, but that everyone should have equal access to, to economic future. Um, a world parliament, a world government, a world, well, a place where the world's problems can be taken to and been resolved. And, and, and we're talking 1863, that Beholders wrote to the kings of the world, put away your armies, educate your people, spend your money on your people rather than, than on military might. And the nations of the world, all these years later, are still spending their money on their military might and not on their citizens. Mm. So that's the main message of Baha'u'llah, mm. that he's the messenger of God, that we believe in only one God, one humanity, and, and, and one religion, because all religions are basically one in our, in our viewpoint. Mm. Mm. So in mm. that, uh, mm. well, the basis for being a pacifist is laying there. Is that is that the implication? No, not exactly. We mm. believe a country of the world has the right to defend itself, mm -hmm. but it should never be the aggressor. Right. If a nation becomes the aggressor, the other nations of the world to put it back in its place. Okay. So we're not pacifists, mm. but we believe that no country has the right to be an aggressor. Okay. Mm. okay. But a country has the right to defend itself. Right. Mm. And that's that's uh, it, as you said that was back in. The yeah, in the late 19th, 19th century, middle 19th century, yes. yes. Mm. So, so he spoke about the League of Nations before there was such. Uh, he yeah, spoke about yeah. a world parliament and a world mm. government and a place where the countries of the world can bring their problems together and have them resolved peacefully. Mm. So we had the League of Nations, we have the United Nations. Mm. There's the latent potential for the United Nations to be that or the, or the International Court of Justice. But these were things in Baha'u'llah's mind Yes. A century and a half before they before they happened. Right. Hmm. Were Baha'is involved in in the world parliament, the first world parliament of religions? That sounds as though they might have been. Um, at that time, in the eighteen ninety two one, mm. no. Mm. Um, but the very first mention of the Baha'i faith in the Western world was in a report from an Anglican missionary mm. working in Persia that he sent a report, which was read out um, about Baha'u'llah. So. Oh, right. Yes, so right. that's okay. the first mention, yes, the first mention of the Baha'i faith in the United, in the West, Western Hemisphere was at that Chicago Parliament. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, the Parliament mm. itself was quite remarkable. Yes, If you back read then. the papers from that, mm. extraordinary. Uh, this progressive view mm. like that, yes. I imagine, could set you up to be persecuted. Yes, that's, that's right. Happened, <laughs> it has happened, mm. of course, that's right. Mm. Um, the Baha'i faith... In the Baha'i faith in, in the cradle where it was born was Persia, which is now Iran. Mm. Um, it's experienced times of freedom and it's experienced times of persecution. Mm. Um, currently, there are more than 100 Baha'is in prison in Iran. Um, our national committee that has been disbanded is in prison. Um, and just recently, a Baha'i was summarily executed. So um, just a few weeks ago. So. Uh, just for his faith or, or? Well, yes, definitely we believe so. He was kid mm. kidnapped and found executed. So, mm. um, so examples like that happen. So obviously um, the international Baha'i community is working, hope, working for religious freedom in Iran and it's not only for Baha'is who are the largest religious minority in Iran um, because you've got, you've got one main group and even Islamic, smaller Islamic groups yes. don't have rights in Iran. Mm. Other faiths don't have rights in Iran. But the largest minority after the, the group that has the power is the Baha'i faith. 
Is and it? so obviously we, yes. we bear the brunt of, mm. of their persecution. Mm. Yes, it's, uh, uh, it's, pre it's very tragic. Anywhere else, it's, is that the main place where it's... Well, that's the main place, but yeah. in, o in other countries of the world where we have, mm. you're not the main religion, um, mm. and um, I hope if Baha'is were ever the main religion somewhere, we would also be peaceful, and, yes. <laughs> and uh, which we would be, because that's, yeah. that's certainly part of our creed to respect that. all religions. Um, well, let's be peaceful and we'll go to a break. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and today we're speaking with Murray Davies, who is a Baha'i, and the chairperson of the Faith Communities Council of Victoria. Thank you. Murray, Iran, we've been talking overseas. Mm. What's ba the Baha'i religion look like in Australia? When sure. did it arrive? Okay. Um, the Baha'i faith came to Australia 19... Uh, there's a little bit of a background first. Um, after Baha'u'llah passed away, one of his sons became the next leader of the Baha'i faith. Mm -hmm. um, and he is known in history as Sir Abbas Effendi. He was knighted, knighted by the British mandate in 1921. Uh, 1920. But he sent a number of letters to the Baha'is of America during the First World War, asking them to go and spread the faith to their own hemisphere. Mm -hmm. um, two Baha'is arose from California, uh, one from Washington, one from California, and they came to Australia, and that was 1920, 1921 they arose, they arrived. Right. Um, Prior to that, there was already one Baha'i in New Zealand. Mm. So the faith is older in New Zealand than Australia. Yeah. So to Australia, it came from America. Actually, a, an English couple living in America. So, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so the faith came here. Um, the first person to declare was an optometrist living in Sydney. And the second Baha'i was a lady in Victoria. Mm. So, uh, so that's 1921. Right. Um, the faith today is 19,000 scattered everywhere across Australia. Yeah. Um, and that's something that's unique about the Baha'i faith. Um, it spreads. And in the Encyclopedia Britannica, it's listed as the world's second most widely spread religion, diverse. Really? So maybe not in population, but scattered across the world. It's the world's second mm -hmm. most scattered religion. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll find Baha'is in most corners of Australia, um, most corners of Victoria. Um, the way we organise ourselves is that in each local government area where there's at least nine Baha'i adults, we form a community and the Baha'i life is very much focused in the local community. And then those communities may sometimes come together and have combined activities. Um, and then we also have an elected state council for about the last 12, 13 years. And since 1934, we've had an elected National Spiritual Assembly which for 20 years was Australia and New Zealand together. Mm -hmm. But since 1954, New Zealand's had its own. Right. So, um, yeah, well, that, that division across the... The, the dish, Tasman yeah, is a bit, a bit difficult expect, to yes. maintain, that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Interesting point about the fact that it's mm. uh, the second most widely distributed uh, mm. religion. Why would that be? What do you think drives that? I think probably because um, from the very beginning, the, the, the prophet of God himself was, was moved. Mm -hmm. um, the Baha'i faith was persecuted in, in the cradle of the faith, which we, Iran, we call it the cradle of the faith. Mm -hmm. um, in 1844 was that the time of the previous messenger that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Baha'u'llah acknowledged him very quickly. By 1850, the Bab had been executed. By 1852, the Barbie leaders had been rounded up and either were imprisoned or executed, 25,000 killed in a, in a very short period. Um, because Baha'u'llah was a member of a previous royal family, because his father had been a minister in the Shah's government, um, oh, yes. he was expelled yeah. rather than being executed, mm -hmm. but only after the poison failed, so they did try to kill him first. Mm -hmm. um, because he then went to Iraq mm -hmm. and went to Turkey and went to Israel, people followed him and that caused oh, the initial okay. spread, yes. um, but then he specifically sent um, 
we don't call them missionaries, we call them pioneers. So at various times in the, faith, in the phases of the faith, pioneers have been sent out to, to spread the faith. Because obviously if you have a good news and if you acknowledge it's the world's newest and youngest independent faith, yes. which the Supreme Court of Egypt declared it an independent faith. Um, so it's, it's acknowledged as an independent faith. It's not part of any other religion. And so it's gone and spread itself across the face of the earth. Right. Mm. That's, that, that's, uh, so his history has yeah. done that. Mm. Yeah, yes, 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 mm. uh, yes, clearly. So that a, a Baha community, does mm. it have a, a, a temple or a, any uh, sort of a... No, okay. A recognizable <laughs> Let's go there. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, in every continent of the world, we have what's called a dawning place of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. um, because... Um, because the initial language of the Baha'is was, okay, they were Persian speaking, but the literary language of the time was Arabic. Mm -hmm. A lot of Baha'i terms are, are Arabic. Mm -hmm. So it's Mashrikul Ashgar, which means the dawning place of the mention of the glory of God. Yes. The one for Australia is in Sydney. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then individual communities may have their own places. Um, we had a property in Melbourne. We've sold, it was a little house like this. We've sold that and we purchased land and we want to build a new building. Right. Um, but that's, that's Melbourne. Um, mm. But most other, most other capital cities in Australia have a, play, have a centre. And a mm. lot, some of the local communities have centres as well. Mm. Okay. So. But real estate and property is not a major, major concern mm. because it's not necessary for a Baha'i community to have a place of meeting. We, no, we can no. use halls, we can use our houses, we can be out on the field. So. Right, mm. right. So when you when you're meeting, uh, <clears throat> does a meet? Do you have meetings that look anything like a church service? <laughs> All right, uh, a normal Baha'i meeting, which we call our, our 19 day celebration. Mm. So the Bab gave us 19 months of 19 days, and we we meet on the first of those first day of the month right. of the 19 day month. Um, in our Baha'i meeting, we'll have we'll have prayers, we'll have readings from our sacred scriptures, we'll have news of our own community, we'll have news, national news, um, and then after that we'll celebrate a supper together. So, okay. Hmm. okay, so, so, so there, there is that sense of community. Well, that's of community, of community coming yes. together. Yes. And in between those 19 days there'll be study sessions and prayer meetings and youth activities, and mm. so life goes on. It's not, it's not just once in a 19 day, it's, it's the community coming together to celebrate every 19 days. Mm. And presumably guests. Uh, yes, guests are welcome. That's right. Yes, in mm. that, in that's that right. Environment. Mm. Well, that's it's a very uh, unstructured. Well, it's structured, but it's not well, too structured. Uh, it, yes, there is a structure, but it's yeah. it's the structures in the background. Mm. Mm. That's right. Mm. That's, mm. That's yes, excellent. Um, the the chair of the meeting can be a youth. It mm. could be an adult. It could be the person's home that the meeting's meeting in. Right. Um, where there are more than nine adults, we mm. do elect a local committee called a local spiritual assembly mm -hmm. um, who look after the affairs of the community. Um, and they'll report every 19 days to the whole community. Okay. Mm. Well, and that's, that's the structure in the background, yes. I'd like to uh, invite mm. you to come back next week to okay. speak more about the bar. I would be sure, to do that. Definitely. We're out of Thank time. you, Norm. That's great. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be seeing you next week and we'll once more be speaking with Murray Davies. Shanti Allah.